Welcome to the comprehensive review of the Echo 355T top panel chainsaw. It's uh, loaded with features. It's very well constructed, very well engineered for its size. Um, weighs in about 8.2 pounds uh, approximately. Very lightweight for its size. Um, we'll go through some uh, key points of it and uh, various features of it. The saw is equipped with a uh, CDI ignition. The uh, tank vent, uh, very common echo vent, but they got it concealed right here. It goes behind your uh, starter cover, right up in that uh, recess. The saw features and outboard clutch, very nice feature. I, I'm a uh, fan of outboard clutches versus inboard. They do keep uh, more heat out away from the output shaft seal. You get a longer shaft seal life with an outboard clutch, uh, in my opinion. The muffler. The muffler on this saw, is, to me, is, is right close to the uh, clutch cover. The clutch cover for the saw is, uh, is plastic. It's not metal like most Husqvarna's are. Uh, so what I did, I put some thermal tape here, or not thermal, but uh, kind of HVAC tape here to act as a uh, kind of a thermal shield to help uh, mitigate the heat against this plastic. It may not affect it per se. There may be enough airflow to keep there, to, but I noticed it is right, right hot by touch um, during preliminary runs of the saw, so I decided to uh, put some thermal barrier there. The chain brake assembly, uh, similar to Husqvarna, is built into the clutch cover. It's the same principle. Uh, before you pull your cover off, make sure your chain brake is disengaged first. Uh, if you have it engaged uh, and you pull it off, you're going to be uh, going through a lot of headache trying to get that back on. Make sure your chain brake is disengaged. Get the clutch cover off. Uh, this particular setup, this little catch paw right here, it's your uh, actuator lever for the chain brake. And this uh, this molded area, this detent here, is what engages and disengages the chain brake assembly for this particular saw. The muffler assembly. Uh, housed behind this cover, retained by three Torx 27 screws. Here, here, here. Yeah. To get to the back two, you have to pull your, uh, or the one, you have to get the clutch cover off to access that other screw. That is where your uh, muffler is encased at. What I did is I removed these three screws um, and I milled the muffler baffle about an eighth inch down from the factory uh, to get better flow, but so as to not restrict less restriction but not to compromise on the uh, the back pressure. You need some back pressure. Another thing to access the spark plug on this particular saw, this Torx 27 screw has to come loose. And this will come out. And that's where your spark plug is uh, located. Another feature 
this lanyard ring here. It, um, it's a bit tedious to you gotta do a lot of prying to actually get that to fold back in. Um, the factory folded in and rest in this this indent here. I leave it out. Um, it, it is rather tedious to uh, it folds out easy but it, it's it's rather tedious to get it to fold back in. The air filter assembly is housed behind this cover. It's uh, semi-encapsulated but it will come out held by the lock turn lock mechanism. Uh, it doesn't readily get a lot of debris similar to Husqvarna's concept. The, the, the uh, kind of a centrifugal uh, evacuation of the larger debris uh, via that port right there. Uh, it takes a majority of the larger wood chips and whatnot and you evacuate them through the cooling system so your air filter uh, will not clog as readily or as, or as fast. The combination switch uh, all the way forward, choke, uh, fast idle or run, and off. One thing I noticed with this switch is when you're turning the saw off, you don't have to pull it all the way back. You can, but I've noticed you can just pull it back slightly to get some tension. It's just enough to turn the saw off and let the, the switch kind of return to its neutral position. Um, cold start, um, full choke. If the saw's been running for a while, um, to restart it once it's been hot forward and then pull it back once that sets your fast idle and then you depress your trigger to set normal idle the fuel and bar oil caps on the saw relatively simply designed um, would probably easily get them uh, they'll fit one another but the bar oil is the lower back black cap and your fuel the mixed fuel is the orange upper cap uh, one of the uh, I wouldn't say complaints but notes on this saw from others as well is the fill ports on this particular saw zoom in here for you some they're actually a bit small than uh, on Husqvarna or steel uh, fill ports um, they're, they're smaller in diameter the threads are not recessed. It um, uses a uh, male instead of female threading on these. But from an engineering standpoint, I see why they did that. They did not want to compromise because this is a plastic case. So they did not want to compromise on the integrity of the, the fuel and oil tanks. So they went with an outer thread. They wanted to keep that plastic thick and beefy. So that makes sense why they did that. Um, it is a little bit more tedious to fill these smaller ports. Um, the bar oil, not bad. The fuel, if you're using a regular can, that can be a bit tedious to do that. I use a uh, primer bulb for a boat gas tank as my uh, fill option, so I don't have a problem with that. This all utilizes a side mounted or side tensioner. Uh, 
I currently have the saw configured with a 14 inch bar. Uh, it is a 3 8 low profile or PECO uh, 5 0 gauge chain, full comp semi chisel presently. The tensioning on uh, especially sprocket nose is a little bit different than solid nose bars. But right now, you bring the chain up. Let me bag it off so you can see there's some slack in there. When you bring the chain up, it just until it just meets the bottom of the bar, it takes a slack out of it. Uh, with any saw, you want to lift up on it. You want to bring that bar nose up. See how much extra slack presents itself. And then run that tensioner in until it stops. And then with sprocket nose, you want to go another quarter to half a turn. Well, this is a newer chain, so I go about a half. Uh, always lift the bar up when you uh, tension the chain. And that will give you a longer bar line. The saw does come with, uh, by default, it has this kind of palm swell mold here. Um, for individual different preferences, depending on the size of your hand, uh, it comes with a slightly smaller one, uh, a white colored plastic one, or it comes with a, a plug actually screw pull the screw out just to the left of the uh, purge bulb take that torch 27 out and that retains that palm swell in there or you can take it all the way off where you can leave it for me the factory's fine um, it gives you that option purge bulb is located there if I didn't already cover that The saw utilizes anti-vibration, does have AV mounts, they're not spring mounts, they uh, appear to be rubber, solid rubber type, not as robust as the spring mounts, but the anti-vibration uh, works well on it, not, not a lot of heavy vibration. That concludes the comprehensive review of the Echo 355T. Very, very powerful little saw for its size. It, it pulls more like like a 50cc saw. It's rated uh, at uh, 35.8 respectively. A very, very powerful saw. Uh, 
would cut a little faster with a full chisel uh, configuration, but uh, not bad at all. 